Let's think about these rules a little bit deeper to explain a few properties of gases um, that are unique to gases. We don't see these properties in solids or liquids. Here's the first one. Let's assume that I have a container of gas, just like I had at the beginning of the lesson, and I have some gas particles in it, just as we said before. Here are the gas particles. Now remember, these gases, of course, are in constant random motion, and they're bouncing against each other. They're bouncing against the sides of the containers. That's what these arrows are indicating. Obviously, they're all moving, but I'm only drawing a few arrows. When we talked about this at the very beginning of the lesson, we drew a container that had a top on it. Let's imagine what happens when we open that top, if we can lift it up. Well, these gases are in random motion, and they only really change directions when they hit against the side of the container. And so what that's going to mean is eventually these guys are, are going to bounce their way out of the container and they're going to spread out. I mean, imagine that we had a tiny little room filled with hyperkinetic little kids and we opened the door. The kids wouldn't all stay in the room. They'd eventually move on out, bounce against the walls, bounce against each other until they filled as big of a space as we gave them. This is what we call expandability. Expandability. Because gases will move around, they'll expand to fill any area that we give them. So let's assume that this whole area here is a new container. We open the old one. These guys are going to move out. They're going to be randomly moving until they fill this whole area. That's what we call expandability because they expand to fill a new volume. Now the process of these gases moving out is what we call diffusion. You're familiar with the concept of diffusion even if you don't necessarily know what causes it or if you're not familiar with the technical name. Diffusion is the reason why when you're at one end of the mall and the movie theater is on the other end, you still smell popcorn and you get hungry. Over at the movie theater, they're making popcorn and uh, the, uh, the gas odor or fragrance of popcorn, those gas particles are moving around. They're moving around very fast and they diffuse out from their original location. Because of that, they can reach you all the way down at the other end of the mall because those gas particles that make up the popcorn scent are going to spread out to fill as large of a volume as you give them. So that's expandability, a very important quality of gas. You don't see it in solids, you don't see it in liquids. Let's look at another quality. Again, here we have a container of gas. Let's put some gas particles in there. Remember, though, we're worried these guys might get out. They're going to expand if we don't uh, close this container. So what I'm going to put here is I'm going to put a plunger or a piston here. So we can think about this container as uh, like a barrel or a cylinder. So this piston is something that I can grab onto and I can move it in this direction. Let's look at what happens when I do that. Up here is a before. Here's the after. I've moved the piston all the way in here. And what I've done is I've pressed all of these gas particles closer together. So here they are. Now why can I do this? I can do this because of the first rule that we talked about in our kinetic theory of gases. And that's that gas particles are tiny and there's a tremendous amount of empty space around them. Because there's so much empty space, I can really squeeze these guys into a, a much smaller volume here. We call this compressing it. And this quality of gases is known as compressibility. Compressibility is particularly important like if you're into scuba diving. What we can do is we can take a very large quantity of air and we can squeeze all the particles that make up that air into a tank, which can allow you to breathe for a very long period of time. The particles are very, 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 very pressed together, or compressed. Now compressibility is unique to gases. Uh, if I took a big hunk of metal and I tried to press down on it with a whole bunch of pressure, it wouldn't change its size. Sometimes people think that liquids are compressible, but they're not. I could take a piston and a cylinder like this and fill it with water and try to jam down on that plunger. Nothing's going to happen. I can't compress the particles in liquid. I can compress them a tiny bit, but not very much. Gases, on the other hand, I can really cram them in a tank or I can cram them in a cylinder like this um, because, the, because there's so much space in between them and they can really pack together. 
Those compressibility and expandability are two unique characteristics that we only see in gases. So uh, we looked at kinetic energy today and different states of matter, and then we looked at the molecular, kinetic molecular theory of gases, some rules that gases abide by. Finally, we looked at expandability and compressibility. This is all the foundation that we need now um, to delve further into gases and start looking at conceptual problems and mathematical calculations for gases.